Hello, so today I thought I'd do another video taking a look at all the good things and all the bad things on my track rail 9.8 XT. So for those who have seen the other video, it's going to be similar to that one. So I'm going to be looking at some of the same sort of things and maybe a few different things. I think the main reason we're doing this video is because a certain thing on the bike randomly just kind of broke out of the blue. So it wasn't expected, didn't expect it to happen. So I just thought we'd take a look at that as well as some of the other things. So yep, let's have a look. So as mentioned in the other video, tyres. I hated the tyres. Basically I had a set of Bont Rager XR5s I think were on the, on the bike. Now in the dry, they were really good. But as soon as it got slightly sloppy, slightly wet or greasy, they just went to shit. And I absolutely hated them. So I swapped them out for a set of WTBs. So on the back, I've got a WTB Verdict Tough. And I've got a tyre on certain side, which seems to be protecting the rim quite well. So I'm happy about that. And on the front, I have a WTB Wet. So this is a set I've used on my other bike. I'm very happy with. So... I've now swapped it onto this bike as well. So I think that's the first thing I've definitely changed and I'm happy with. Another thing that I wasn't too happy about was the rear axle. This has a tendency of coming very, very loose and the wheel starts to wobble obviously. But lately, it still comes loose a bit, but it seems to have settled down. So just a bit of an update there. It does seem to be settling down from what it was like. So I'm quite happy with that. Well, we're on the back of the bike. I have noticed that the valve, this little bugger here, has a tendency to work itself loose. So you'd be riding along, doing a few cool trails, and all of a sudden your tyre is flat and the valve is pretty much hanging off. So I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but I'd certainly recommend checking that so you don't lose it when you're on a ride. So I keep checking it now every couple of descents just to make sure, especially if they're rocky. So that's an absolute pain in the backside. So yep, another thing I'm a bit concerned about is this area here, the whole bottom bracket area. It's very low to the ground this time round. Certainly doesn't look it from here, but when I'm riding, definitely seem to be hitting off a lot more rocks and stuff to what I do on my other bike. Just recently come back from the Lake District, and I constantly kept banging off the bottom. So I wasn't happy about that. I think as well, I'm going to change, change the cranks over for some shorter cranks. Hopefully that might help with a bit, with a bit more clearance and just make the whole pedalling a bit smoother. But yeah, something to be aware of there, definitely lower as far as I'm aware. Another thing I was a bit concerned about were the forks. I've got a set of Zebs on here and um, I just found they were quite saggy and I felt like I was constantly over the front of the bike and every time I was going down steep trails and rock on pressing I just felt like I was nearly over the bars every time so thankfully it was a quick fix pretty much got some of these added a few of these in I don't know what you call them properly but I just call them little blocks so I added these in so I've now got three blocks in here and that seems to have done the trick so I'm very happy about that anybody who's ever put these in or haven't put these in they're very easy to do Make sure you let the air out. Come up there. So unscrew it, pull it out, screw that on, and then push it back in, and screw it back together, put the air back in to whatever PSI you have them at, and you're sorted. So yeah, it's a very easy fix. And again, I think that's just a personal preference. I just found them too saggy for my liking. Look at that. The woods are alive today. Um, so yeah, I think in the future, I'm going to knock these up to a 170 and I'm going to put a spring in them so yeah I think on an e-bike I think a spring will be better but yep yeah. great little things these another thing I'm thinking about changing are the bars these bars came with the bike carbon bond ranger bars I just find them to be a little bit too flat I want a bit of a rise so I'm hoping that by getting a 170 fork or just extending the forks to 170 with a spring and getting a ball with a bigger rise I'm hoping that that's going to make us feel a bit more comfortable on the bike as if I'm sitting a bit further back 
So when I'm going off big jumps and drops, I feel a bit more natural rather than leaning over the front, which is what seems to be happening at the moment. It's not a major issue, it's just something I think I want to try. I think to start with, I'll get a cheap set of bars and just see how it goes. And if I like it, I'll change back to a set of carbon bars. But yep, hopefully that'll sort out my issue of being nose heavy. And another thing I'm thinking about changing is the rear shock. It's not caused any problems, it's been quite nice. I have no issues with it. Seems to have worked non-stop. But I just feel like I want to get the coil put on a nice spring. Just to beef it up a bit more. As with the front, I just think that e-bikes look better and probably perform better with coil shocks. And now onto the main reason for doing this video. So as I said previously, a random part of the bike broke and I don't know how it broke. I kind of have an idea how it did, but um, I certainly never fell off, never knocked it or anything like that. There was no sheer force put into it. It just randomly broke and it is. Dun, dun, dun. The mount for the computer. As you can see there, big crack where the screw goes, and the whole thing is loose. So, yep, not really sure how that happened. I certainly didn't fall off the bike or nothing like that. From what I remember, I got off the bike. I don't know if I caught it, if a bit of clothing caught it, or when the straps on my bag caught it, but something snagged, felt a tug, and then thought nothing of it, got home, and then found that. So, thankfully, it's an easy fix. I have a replacement part here already. So if you have to buy these, these are £10, but thankfully the bike's warranted, and... Blazing Bikes, sent this one up, no hassle. So within a day of texting Blazing Bike, I had this sent to us within that week. So I'd like to give a big shout out to Blazing Bikes for the quick response and no hassle replacement. So thank you Blazing Bikes. But look at that man. Absolutely mental, who would have thought it? It looks like an easy fix. Take out the little star nut. And I think underneath in the computer, underneath there, there is another little star nut. Take that off. So yep. And that other little star nut inside takes off this part of the this part of the mount here. So that bit comes out. And then you just replace that bit. Which I have in here. And I can get into it. So there we go. That is the mount. Screw that on, but before you do, just make sure you screw that part back on to that. And then screw that to your frame. It's got two little, what's it got a clip? It's got a little, a little lip, kind of there. Can you see it? And that bit, from what I gather, is supposed to sit into the frame down there. And unfortunately, mine hasn't sat in there since about two days after I bought it. It kind of bounced out and I couldn't get it back in could have tried unscrewing it but you know I wasn't aware of it but now I am so yeah hopefully quick fix on this and it'll be done so I have my tool <laughs> or my other tool can't decide in they go quick fix in the woods <laughs> just make sure you don't lose anything Yep, unscrew that. Maybe a bit more. I'm sure this screw wasn't that long. There you go. Make sure you don't lose that screw. And underneath, put a wire through, you have that. And again, you have two more little star screws, things. 
which are a different size to the one I've just used up there. Okay. I'll unscrew them and I'll be back. <clears throat> so them two screw things, we're just securing that to the mount. And that's what you have inside now. Hopefully they pull out and the whole thing just comes out. I hope. So yep, they just pull out. Quite easy. Take off the mount, feed it through, that's the new mount on now, and just pull it back together. So when you're pushing them back in, you'll notice these white lines. So just make sure them are facing you when you put them in. It only goes in one way. So there we go. That's it. Hopefully that's it done and set up correctly. Right. Got the little screw things back in. So now it's just putting put them back on the frame. There it is sitting back on the frame. Gonna put the board back in. I've tried to make sure that that little sort of little lip thing I mentioned earlier down there is sitting in the frame as well. Seems to be sitting better. My god, mechanics. Who needs a mechanic when you've got me? <laughs> Watch it not work when I turn it on. Put the wires on backwards or upside down or something. We'll soon find out. So here we go. Moment of truth. Oh well, it's starting up. My god. Seems you're working. Hooray! Well, fingers crossed, that's it. So it's sitting there, nice and so solid. Yep, that's a lot more solid than it was. I'm happy with that. <laughs> just one more test, just to make sure. Yeah, you've got the screw in right. There we go. Have a tendency of over tightening things, but that looks like it's done to me. We shall take it for a spin. <sighs> So yep, I hope that video has helped. Um, if anyone has that same issue with the computer mount, now you know how to fix it, it's pretty easy. So hopefully that's helped people. Um, but yeah, let's just hope I put it on right and it works. Good little workbench that. Can't beat working in the woods. <laughs> yep, hope that video was okay. Hope you enjoyed it and cheers for watching and goodbye.